Have you ever thought that something as simple as eating can be one of the most rewarding things to do in Ramadan if you do it right? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm your brother Abu Abdisalam speaking to you from the blessed city of Mecca. That's Mecca al Mukarramah. Ramadan, as we all know, is a time of avoiding most important things like food and drink, as well as focusing instead on worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and getting close to Him. But what if I told you that at specific times in Ramadan, eating the food that we love is the most rewarding act? Yes, I'm talking about the times of suhoor and iftar. Abu Atiyah once said, I said to Aisha radiallahu anha, Among us there are two men, one of whom hastens iftar and delays suhoor, and the other one delays iftar and hastens suhoor. She said, which of them is the one who hastens iftar and delays suhoor? I said, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. She said, this is what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do. Meaning delaying the suhoor as close as possible to fajr and eating iftar as soon as maghrib sets. Just like us, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would work during the morning hours in Ramadan, under the sun and in hunger. They plowed the fields, tended to their livestock, and traded and bartered in the markets. Despite the scorching heat and the pangs of hunger that come with fasting, they did not waver in their commitments. They were diligently dedicated to their roles in society, as well as to their worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at once, showcasing an outstanding balance of duty and devotion. Fast forward to our times, the essence of Ramadan remains unchanged. We too navigate through our day-to-day -day responsibilities, juggling work, family, and our responsibilities towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sun sets and the Maghrib adhan echoes, marking the end of a long day's grind. Iftar arrives as a much needed breather, a precious time when the most beloved deed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to simply open our fast and to be grateful to Him. In that moment of relief, as we reach for those dates and sip cool water, it's more than just fulfilling a physical need. It's a profound act of obedience to Allah and indeed gratitude, reminding us of the deep gratitude we owe to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His countless blessings and mercy. It's an embrace of the relief and thankfulness for every challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has helped us get through, recognizing Allah's support in our journey from true dawn all the way to sunset. The time of iftar marks the end of a great act of worship and our vulnerability during this period gets us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. This is exactly why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith authenticated by Albani, for the fasting person there is an accepted dua. Meaning that when the fasting person makes dua right before his iftar, this is a great time to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just before his iftar, a fasting person's soul is at its peak closeness to Allah and gratefulness for having almost completed the fast. This is perhaps why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set this time to make dua and ask him for anything we wish. We can ask him to clear our debts, guide our children and family members, get high grades in exams, cure us from sickness, get that promotion. We can make dua for the people who have passed away. Ask Allah to remove our worries, grant us peace of mind and anything else that you desire or need. The other major meal in Ramadan is of course the suhoor. The Prophet wasallam said in a hadith narrated by both Bukhari and Muslim, make sure to have your suhoor meal, for suhoor is blessed. Suhoor gives us energy and prepares us for the next day's fast. On top of that, it is a meal that is blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or Mubarak, making its effect even more potent. As the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha that we mentioned before states, the Prophet ﷺ used to delay his suhoor. He used to delay it until just before Fajr starts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permits us to eat and drink until the break of dawn, as stated in the Quran. Allah says, وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطُ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ ثُمَّ أَتِمُّ الصِّيَامَ إِلَى الليل. And eat and drink until the white thread, meaning the light, of dawn appears to you distinct from the black thread, meaning the darkness of night, and then complete your song. Your fast 
until the nightfall. This is in Surah Al-Baqarah. So let's embrace these moments, understanding their essence and significance beyond mere actions, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. How can we bring them to life in our fasting routine this Ramadan? Let me know, share your thoughts below. One final point I'd like to say is make sure you do have suhoor, even if it's a glass of water or even if it is a date or three dates. Jazakumullahu khayran. I'm your brother Abu Abdus Salam speaking to you from Mecca. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.